Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Y'all got to forgive me now. I got my, got my, my, uh, my Bluetooth in. Now these is headphones, but my wife be clowning me. About to sell Bluetooth in my ear. She bought them for me, but you supposed to wear them when you're working out, but I be wearing them, you know, like the old school players be having their Bluetooth in and when, when they think they got some money and they finna pull up on you and they got that Bluetooth in their ear. So I be wearing it like that. But you know what? I've been doing the Q&A on IG, Instagram. And I want you to go over to my Instagram. If you don't have an Instagram, then create your Instagram. And you ain't got to follow nobody. Check out that IG. What I done did now is I'm doing it in the daytime. I'm doing it in the daytime because I used to wait till night. But I realize it's just as much people online during the day stealing money from the job paying attention to social media and not working so i'm like you know what let me just do it in the daytime so at nighttime when my kids go to bed i just go focus on my wife and i still answer them some at night too i just kind of be answering them all throughout the day but sometimes my wife she be reading her book or if she doing something you know i go ahead and answer the uh the q a and i like it you know sometimes i get drained on it but I done figured out, you know, just how to make it work because I also, you know, it's also work. You know, you working, it's pulling on you, but I post a t-shirt, you know, and this for this for my servants out there is like, don't serve to the point that you resent what you're doing. You know, figure out a way to make it a win-win so that you serving, but you also got, you know, the five loaves of bread and the two fish. So you can feed your family while you giving and giving and giving. You still need to be able to feed your family. So, you know, thank y'all who support the T-shirts up under the video or in the in the thing or, you know, sign up for a course this Saturday for the 25 and under. We're doing Zoom. It's a few people that signed up for that. And uh, I, pre I really appreciate that. But one thing I noticed is this the thing. This is what I try to get men to understand. It's like, man, these women out here, these women out here doing bad. These women out here doing bad. Go to the Q&A on my Instagram. Click on my picture. You see the little fiery ring around my picture, the little colorful ring. You click on that if you don't know how to work Instagram, and it's the story. Now, let me tell you, when the story pop up, when you're reading it, you press your thumb on the screen and you hold your thumb on the screen. So you're pressing your thumb on the screen and you're holding it and it'll make it'll make the story stop. A lot of people say, how do you slow it down? You press your thumb on the screen in the middle of it and it'll hold it. And when you're ready for it to change slides, then you lift your thumb up. Now, if you touch it on the on the right side, it's going to go to the next one. You touch it on the left side, it's going to go back to the previous one. So that's how you work the stories now for those y'all who don't know. And now listen to me. You women out here doing bad. And that's why I gotta try to that's why I try to help these men understand. They are, oh, you're a simp. Oh, you selling not. Oh, you need to be more balanced. Oh, you need to tell the women what they need to do. They ain't always right. And that's understood. And when you read my stories, if a woman wrong, I'm gonna tell her she wrong. A lady wrote me today and she said, listen. My boyfriend, baby mama, don't want me to come to their child birthday party. And I don't think that's right. My boyfriend need to speak up and stand up about this. Am I wrong? And I wrote a, yes, you are wrong. Because you are a girlfriend, not a wife. So you're not his other half. And the mother of his child has the right to protect her space and to create separation between you and her so that you don't have to be at her child birthday party with her child looking at her as the mom and you as the daddy new girlfriend that's awkward but if you the wife nah okay we got to make some we'll make some some change because now you the other half now y'all one but as a girlfriend you don't get to just come in there and bogart so i call it straight down the middle you know, if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm going to tell it like it is.
I'm an umpire. I just call it like I see it. Everything ain't going to be right according to your opinion, but just the position that God done put me in. So I'm prayerful and mindful over my answers. And sometimes I will answer something and I delete it and I write it again. And I look at it and I see holes in it. I delete it and I write it again. Sometimes it takes me three times. About three times at the most. Maybe four before, but at the most, it's typically going to take me three. To, sometimes it takes me three times to get an answer that I feel is balanced, is fair, is prayed over, is spirit full, and is spirit led, the spirit of God. Speaking into people's life because I understand people are going to go and may make changes. And if they don't make changes, just they're going to hear it, what I said to them over and over and over. And so I'm mindful of that. And I can't answer in a novel. So it got to be short. It got to be concise. It got to be direct. And a lot of people be responding back to me. And it's like, listen, that's really what going to drain me. So if you like the Q&As, you know, don't be asking no follow up question. And be wanting to debate in the DM. You know, I'm married. Ain't got time to be debating in no DM. And so now listen to me. To y'all ladies watching this. Y'all out here doing bad. Y'all out here down bad. I'm like, my goodness. I'm like, my goodness. What in the world? What in the world are you dealing with? What, why are you putting up with all of that? I mean, I, in a lot of questions, some of the questions that I get, I don't post. Because it's too traumatic. It's too graphic. So I get to see a lot more than I post. Because my son is in ninth grade and his friends read the stories. So I try to keep that I try to keep that in mind. The friend, his friend, his ninth grader read the story. And his friend's been reading my story since the seventh grade. He'll tell me about it. He say, Hey Dad, my friend such and such says you went live on Instagram and he watched your live and he was crying. I was like, What? Like, man, this is awkward. And so I try to be mindful of it, but I got to be real still. I still got to be real and get these kids ready, too. So I'm talking, so so y'all got to realize I'm talking from 13-year-old up to 70-plus. You know, that's on Instagram. And so, but when I'm getting these questions, I'm looking at these questions. This the thing. This the thing. Is now I'm gonna tell you. The Bible say, "Let no man bear witness of himself." But Lord, forgive me for this. I need a Nobel Peace Prize. I need a Nobel Peace Prize. Cause the questions I be getting, questions I be answering. Lord, it's just hard to have words for it. But here's the the thing. The common thing is low self-worth low self-esteem that's the common thing low standards that's the common thing and I'm like man really really I'm like come on now I'm like come on now I mean read them Q&A you're gonna see what I'm talking about it's like Tony he cheated on me several times. We've been together 12 years, 10 years. Tony, he beat on me. He cheated on me. Tony, he slept with my sister. Tony, he slept with my best friend. Tony, he cursed me out. Tony, he told me I need to lose weight and he's not attracted to me anymore. Tony, he told me he better be, I better be glad he willing to be with me because no other man want me. It just be stuff like that. Tony, y'all seen the one I post on my page. If you didn't go see it, the lady say, Tony, he put a gun to my head while I was pregnant. You know, is this love? And it's like, she asked the question because really she don't know. Because she really don't know the depths of relationships like she doesn't know 
if that is inside of a man's scope to where this is a man because she don't know men a lot of women don't know men so they're like okay this is a man this is what he did he's not in a insane asylum he hasn't done prison time so this must just be men like he comes from a two-parent home he doesn't wear a straight jacket like this must be men and so a lot of women they just in this place to where they're like this must be men because this man is not in a gang so if he's beating on me like this if he cheating on me like this if he cursing me out like this if he keep going back to his ex and then coming back to me he going to his baby mama then coming back to me this must just be men and i will be honest with you i will be honest with you for the most part that is men i know you don't want to hear it i know that ain't what you want to hear but for the most part that is men and this is the thing. This is the thing. I'm trying to understand this. I'm trying to understand this. But this is what you got to understand. As humans, we are flawed. We born sinners. We born sinners. I just took my charge out. Forgive me. We born sinners. And we born into sin. And we renew through Christ. But if a person doesn't know Christ... And they have not been renewed. What I mean by this is if they don't have a belief system, if they don't believe in eternal life, if they don't believe in salvation, if they don't believe in a creator, in God, in the power of God, being able to come in and reside in their heart and change their life. If they don't believe in that, they're going to be they're going to be a human. They're just going to be a human. That is left to themselves, left to their own way. And with that being the case, with that being the case, we are given to, we're given to our flesh. And our flesh is rude, nasty, selfish, jealous, combative. All of these things that our flesh is. Think about it now. Think about it as a human. Until you grew, you'll look at somebody else who get a promotion, who get a blessing, who get a new car, who get a husband, who get a wife, and you'll be jealous of them until you grew. Until you grew, you could look at somebody else and be jealous of them. You, when I was out there in the world, before I rededicated my life to Christ, I, I, was, I was a thief. I was a criminal. I was a liar. I was a manipulator. I was a deceiver. If I go to get in my car and you park too close to my car to where I could tell when you open your door, your door got to hit my car. I will key your car. As long as I key your car, I reach over there with my key and whoosh, get me a swipe in. I ain't going to tell you no lie. So I know what it's like to be redeemed by Christ. I know what it's like to be renewed. Because let me tell you, I was a complete savage out there. Now, not the worst of the worst now. But because I always knew God. Because I, you know, I, I was brought up in the church so i knew god so i wasn't the worst of the worst when when a lady said oh so you just dogged everybody out no dog that is relative that's relative i the relationship didn't work out you know there was some arguments there was some fights there was some infidelity but dog and i got levels to it dog and i got levels to it now i wasn't the worst of the worst i say that but i say that just to drive a point home and just to not make myself look better than nobody else in the sense so i over exaggerate on how bad i was because if i was that that bad i wouldn't be here today so now listen to me now 
Listen to me and hear me clearly now. So what you got to realize, cut my Netflix on. My, I'm at my son's soccer practice. And, uh, and I'm at my Sprinter. My Sprinter van. So I, this was a dream come true here. This here Sprinter. It's like you got to set your dreams. You got to know what you want. And you got to be willing to go out there and get it, man. You got to be willing to go out there for it. So now listen to me. Here I was, and I was out there. So I know the nature of the human heart. And explore your heart as a human. Explore your heart as a human. And this is what I tell people all the time. It's like it also depends on how you built, how you wired. See, as human beings, as humans, we could be wired. We could be wired a certain way to where you got to realize and understand. So like with men, with men, what you got to realize and understand is with men, I'm going to clean up some of this here dust on my van while I'm talking to you so I can be making use of my time. So like with men, this is what you got to understand. And this is what I try to tell people all the time. Like God didn't make a man the same way he made a woman. A lot of people don't realize that. As as men and women, we are not the same. So look at what a woman's body function does. Look at what a woman's body does, okay? Think about this now. Look at what a woman's body does. And look at what a man's body does, okay? What do a man's body do? His thing, his thing, get up. That thing get up and it get ready. It go in a woman. It shoot something out of there. That woman body fertilizes, gets fertilized. That egg. And then now the woman body got to do everything. The woman body has to do everything from that point forward. All the man experience in that transaction was pleasure. All the man experience. The man don't have, and this is what I try to tell men and help men understand. Now we got to go back to what God set in place. Not to what we set in place. Not to what, 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 what we want as humans. We got to look at what God set in place. You know hear I me? Mean? The man only felt pleasure. That's all a man felt. From that point, the woman then starts to carry this baby. The woman got back pain. The woman got back pain. This woman, she gonna have cramps. She gonna have sickness. Morning sickness. She throwing up. She hurting. A little human is being... A little human is is growing in this woman. And guess what? That woman body is changing. And that woman can lose that little human. That woman can go through a miscarriage. So when, when that woman sit down on that toilet. And she get up. And it's something in that toilet and it's bloody or whatever it is. That woman going to feel that on a whole nother level than that man. Because it was her body that was starting to change. Not that man body. You see what I'm saying? So you got to be able to realize and understand the dichotomy, which I don't know what that means, but it sounds good right there. So we're going to use that right there. And what that means to me is you got to be able to realize how men and women coexist and correlate one to another. And you got to see that the man experience through this is pleasurable. The woman experience through bringing a child in the world is painful. So what happens is the woman appears 
just based on what the body functions now this ain't my thought the woman appears to be mother nature meaning the woman appears to be the backbone of the world the crux of the world the woman appears to be the one who god chose to use but she going through the pain she going through the pain and so what this does is innately without being able to explain it what kind of happens here is this woman feels inferior a lot of times women feel inferior to men women feel inferior to men and women bow down to men the bible say the woman is the weaker vessel and so a lot and so that shows in relationships because the only time i see a woman stand up for herself and leave in a relationship is when she had an extremely strong mama or an extremely strong daddy or she comes into the knowledge and the strength of God. That's the only time. Other than that, what I see and hear from women is putting up, put up in, is putting up with the mess of men. That's what I see in here. Is women putting up with men, dealing with anything. And when you go and you read these questions and you see how many of these women have been cheated on, dog died, they get with the man and all they doing is juggling this man between him and his baby mama or his ex-girlfriend. I ain't never seen this many men, I ain't never seen this many men come to me and say, Tony, I got to deal with my girl. Now, I've seen it before, but I could count on one hand. I could count on one hand how many times. The way I done heard a man say, Tony, I got to deal with my, my woman. Keep talking to her ex-boyfriend. Keep you know, she talked to her baby daddy every day. Y'all done heard it before. Yeah, but not, not nowhere near is what I'm hearing from these women. So this is the thing. What women got to understand, y'all got to skew that. I, got, I had to cut that out. I got to crank that out up. Now y'all got to listen a little closer. Now I had to crank that out up. So now listen to me. This is what I'm seeing. So just by the nature of the world, just by the nature, just by human nature, what I'm noticing is that women, on average, on average, this ain't every woman now. And if you're not this woman, we don't have to hear about it in the comments. God bless you. Here go a cookie. Because we can't verify if you're telling the truth or not. If you just capping for the comments. So God bless you. Here go a cookie. But what I realize on average is that women tend to bow down to their man. Women tend to be subservient and submissive to any male with a dangling, with something between his legs swinging. He, and the thing about it is, any male he don't even have to be a good man. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around because I bust my butt to please my wife. And it just, it's mind boggling to me. It's mind boggling to me when it's mind boggling to me when I see women put up with grown boys 
it's kind of like this right here. And a lot of people don't understand this. And, and I remember one lady, she took this too serious. Um, Tony, don't ever say that you're thinking about cheating on your wife. Ma'am, will you hush? Okay, thank you. But imagine this. Imagine you going to work every day. And you showing up 15 minutes early. Because you believe to be early is to be on time. And you get in there and at 8 o'clock when you're supposed to be working, you get there 745. You clocking in 745. You ain't even clocking in. You going in there and at, at 759, at 8 o'clock, you clocking in. So you'd have been in there 15 minutes getting ready, getting stuff ready. You might have done started work and answered a couple of emails or whatever. Um, got your got your forklift ready, whatever you do. And here you are, eight o'clock, boom, you clocking in. It's some time that you clock out for lunch and you work on your lunch break. Then you come back after lunch and you work and you might work overtime. You might work 30 minutes extra, hour extra. If you ain't got no kids that you got to go pick up. And and but you clock out at the time it's time to clock out. Now imagine you doing this. And your coworker is at home, but calling in to their friend and say, "Hey, clock me in." And the boss moving around, so the boss don't know who all clock, who all there, who all not. And boss ain't checking it because too many, too many employees. Hey, clock me in. They get clocked in, and they 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 sneak in the back door an hour late. They sneak out an hour early, and they, they taking turns clocking each other in, clocking each other out. Let's just say this happened. This how it used to. This how the clock used to work when I used to work for somebody. On y'all probably got updated systems now when you work work for somebody. But this how it used to work. And so you get clocked in and clocked out. And now listen to me now. So they getting paid what you getting paid, but they work two hours less a lot of days. And then when they come to work, they don't even do all their work. So what they don't finish, it get passed off. Oh, Lord. See, I was wiping around my screen up there. And it just glowing. It ain't cutting off. And so I'm like, Lord, did I mess around and get the thing wet? And the thing reacting to that little bit of moisture. And so now listen to me. You working. And they getting paid the same thing as you getting paid, but you outworking them. How hard after this happened for years, how how is it going to feel when you like, I'm sacrificing and I'm committing. This is not fair. And this, what I'm saying is this is how it feels for good men. Because we look around and we see so many no good men. And the no good men are getting treated better than the good men. So the no good men, because they make a woman feel less than and they make a woman compete for their love, the no good men got a woman cooking three meals a day. She twerking on a handstand. She's sliding down a pole. She doing twerk shows for him. She cooking in a thong. She is doing the absolute most. She entertaining, bringing women into the bedroom, or she allowing him to cheat on her. And then all she do is yell and cuss and cry. But she keep doing, she keep cooking. When he suck up to her, when he kiss her behind, when he when he beg her forgiveness, then she right back in bed sleeping with him. And then the thing about it is, because he doing all of that, she'll take she'll take and. Because he doing all that, she'll take him work harder. This what blow me now. This what blow me. 
I done dealt with so many women in the capacity of a coach to where the women work harder after getting cheated on. But guess what the good men, guess what the good men's story is? The good men's story is, the good men's story is, um, Tony. Man, you know, I, I, I'm faithful to my wife. I get her gifts. I get her for nothing gifts. I rub her feet. I rub her bite. Like, I speak life into her. I support her in whatever she want to do. Like, if she want to stay home with the kids, I'm with it. I cover the bills. If she want to uh, go to, if she want to go work, I, I pick up the kids, drop the kids off. I support her in that. And Tony, man, she be so tired from all the stuff she, the working, she working so hard for other people. Like, man, we sleep together once every two weeks. Hey, Tony, like, I'm busting my butt. I'm working like this. She don't clean for weeks at a time. She don't, I'm in there cleaning and stuff. She don't cook. She'll cook, you know, once a month. This is what the good man saying. This is what the good man saying. And you know why? It's because the woman got complacent. Because she like, oh, I got a good man. He not finna wander away. Like, he ain't going nowhere. Like, I ain't got to drop it like it's hot. Because he finna be here hot or cold. So I ain't got to do all that like the other woman got to do. But then if the man go to tiptoeing around, now the woman will bust her butt for that man. Because this will happen. Just how women say, oh, we dress for other women. We want to look good for other women. And I'm like, what sense do that make? But just how women say that, guess what happened? When a man introduce another woman, eight to nine out of ten women going to get mad and cry and cuss them out and may go to coaching, but going to come back and going to work harder and going to blame herself and say, well, maybe I wasn't doing it right. Maybe I wasn't doing enough. Maybe this, maybe that. I push him away. He cheated because of me. No, he cheated because he's a cheater. He cheated because he's a cheater. Because if a man not a cheater, guess what? That woman don't have to cook. That woman don't have to clean. That woman don't have to sleep with him every week. And he's not going to cheat. He may get into his watches or his cars or his intramural league playing sports his work, he's, he may get into his Bible, he may get into something, but a good man, regardless of what that woman do, as long as she's not disrespecting him, because see, cooking and cleaning is not a requirement of being a wife. That's a that's a bonus. That's a plus. That's not a priority. That's just something that has been passed down through societal standards and gender roles, but that doesn't define a woman. And so a good man knows that and understand that. So a good man is not going to cheat on a woman just because she's not cooking every week or cleaning the house every week. A good man is not going to cheat on a woman just because she's not doing certain sexual acts in the bedroom. He's not going to cheat on her because of that. You see what I'm saying? So that's what you got to understand. And a lot of times men who are manipulating they will tell a woman, oh, I cheated because you don't give me affection. Or I cheated because you don't speak my love language. Or I cheated because you never cook and you never clean on a regular. No, you cheated because you a cheater. You cheated because you a dog. You didn't cheat because of something that woman did. Nah, oh, I cheated because, you know, she, you cheated on me. No, you cheated because you a cheater. Point blank period, whether you a man or you a woman, get the t-shirt under the video, point blank period. So now listen to me. This is the thing that's going on. 
And so listen, ladies, listen to me, ladies. Y'all have got to do better. Send this video to every woman in your phone. Tell her, listen, if you too busy, scroll to 35, the 35 minute mark, but you need to listen to the whole thing and put it in perspective so you understand maybe why we doing what we doing. And so it's like, yes, to a certain degree, you created to let a man lead based on just genetic makeup, based on your mental makeup, based on societal standards, based on the way the world has been created and passed down. Women's voice have been stolen. And so that'll rewire a person's brain. A woman can run a Fortune 500 company just as good as a man. A woman could run the country just as good as a man. A woman could do anything except for not every woman can do physical things like lift as much weight and all of that just because of the physical differences in the body. Men may be physically stronger, but men are not mentally stronger than a woman because men don't have to give birth. So a man ain't never been tested truly in his mental strength of what that feel like when you in that pain and, and contractions and labor and you pushing a baby out. So a man really don't understand how strong a woman is mentally. And that's just truth be told. But the thing is, because of everything that I mentioned, societal norms and gender roles and what we used to, a lot of women submit to a male who is not a man. And this is what y'all ladies have to do. You have to, ladies, listen to me. You have to set standards. You have to love yourself. You have to know who you are. Know whose you are, meaning you belong to God. Know what you want. Know what you don't want. Know what you will tolerate and know what you won't tolerate. Listen to me and you have to stop compromising your self-worth and your self-respect. Stop compromising your self-worth and your self-respect. Stop ignoring your intuition. Stop ignoring your intuition. Stop listening to your second mind instead of your first mind. Trust your instincts. Trust your gut. When you get treated in a way that you did not write before that relationship, leave. Leave immediately. Leave immediately because when you find the strength to leave, what you're doing is you blessing you and you blessing the man and you blessing mankind. Because when the woman has strength as the backbone of the relationship and of the world, everything is stronger. Break your back and tell me what you can do. Break your spine and tell me how much you worth. Come on now. Talk to me now. Come on now. Talk to me. So what is our society when the backbone of society is being broken? When the backbone of society is living in a broken state, what is our society? Nothing. Ladies, stop compromising your self-worth and your self-respect when you leave and i'm talking when you leave immediately when you get up out there you teach that man a lesson and guess what if there is a grown man inside of him you will pull it up out of him and he will go from being a grown boy to being a grown man because you show him immediately that you not playing no games, that you refuse to be disrespected, to be dogged out, to be mistreated, and that this man going to have to get his act together. And if he don't want to get his act together, 
if he don't want to get with the program, if he don't want to treat you like God's daughter and like he God's son, you got to go. You got to go. Immediately, you got to go. And when he see your back walking away, that man going to respect you. Whether he changed for you or not, you got his respect. You got his respect. And guess what? If he go get him a do girl that ain't going to walk away when he dog her out and he disrespect her, guess what? He going to miss you. He going to regret not being man enough for you because the woman he with is too easy. She too easy. She is a lap dog to him. She is a floor mat to him. She is limp between his toes and he don't respect her. He don't love her and he don't appreciate her. So he going to be on your phone because truthfully he wants somebody to hold him accountable. And guess what? If you done moved on like you should and he have not grown and he have not changed when he come back, you not entertaining him. Guess what? When he have a daughter with this woman that is a floor mat, he's going to spit in her face, the woman face. And he going to raise his daughter to be like you. He going to name his daughter after you, her first name or her middle name. And the baby mama don't even know it. Oh, where did you come up with that name at? It's just it's just a name that, you know, I, I, I seen on a TV show or I heard it somewhere in a, in a book or something. And it just stuck with me. That's your name that that man daughter carrying around because you had the strength to walk away and then guess what you might have to walk away from nine toads t-o-a-d nine frogs before you meet your prince charming and then guess what you gonna have to walk away from your prince charming but because he prince charming and because he got a grown man in him he gonna change he gonna call you he's gonna beg for forgiveness he gonna say please forgive me i was stupid listen I'm doing coaching right now with Tony Gaskin. I'm reading Make It Work. I'm reading A Woman's Influence. I'm down here with Pastor Such and Such. He mentoring me now. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the YouTube channel. I'm, I'm, I done stopped listening to that man in the dark with the stuff spinning on his desk. I done stopped listening to the mid towel, to the red pill. I done cut off my homeboy who be having me smoking and drinking and going to the club. Like, listen, I did everything. Give me one more chance. I'm begging you. Give me one more chance. You could write Tony Gaskin and ask him what he think about me. If he feel like I'm real. If he feel like I'm changing. Like, please. Here go my phone. Here go my password to my email. Look, here go my social media. You notice know my main account. But here go my phone. Listen, I'm turning on the location of my phone so you can see where, my, where I'm at at all time find my friend location tag geo tag everything listen you here go a tracker you could put it on my car if this is your husband if this your husband he going to bend over backward to get you and guess what he gonna come in and he gonna show change and you can't give him everything all, all at once now you can't get down there and be swallowing day one you got to stand your ground. You got to you got to start all over, homeboy. We starting with we starting with holding hands, homeboy. We starting with a kiss on the cheek, homeboy. Then we going to a kiss on the forehead, kiss on the nose, then a peck on the lips. All right, is is a week on the cheek, a week on the forehead, a week on the nose, a week on the lips. I'm not being literal. I'm not being literal because some of y'all will be. Got that man had five weeks before he get a kiss on the lip. Come on, I'm not being literal. But what I'm saying, you can't go all the way zero to 100 when you take the man back. Because you don't know if he one of them NARCs that y'all like to talk about. You don't know if he one of them. So he could do all of that, what I just mentioned. And he coming back to get the last laugh. That's why you got to start all over. And you got to move slow. So that you can see his work. And you can see his consistency. And he's going to accept full responsibility. He's not going to point the blame at you. He's not going to be talking about what you need to change and what you need to do. Because he's the one that did you wrong. He accepted full responsibility. 
He not fussing with you. He not fighting with you. He not arguing with you. None of that. He doing what he has to do. Point blank period. Get the t-shirt. And listen, when you start, when you see consistency, you two weeks in, three weeks in, you see consistency, then you may say, okay, you know, I'm ready to get on back to bed and not freak Nick. Ready to get back to where we was. Now, then you could go ahead and drop it like it hot. And, and, but until you see that consistency, you have to know that he doing the right thing. And that he, he didn't really change. Listen to me. The y'all is woo. I'm tired. I be exhausted, and I retire every day. But because I work for the Lord, and I'm gonna tell you how I know I work for the Lord, cause the Lord showed me something today. The Lord showed me something today. I can't even share that with you, cause it was for me personally. The Lord showed me something today. The Lord said, "Listen, I got you. Listen, I got you. Listen, I know, I know the work ain't easy." I know the work ain't easy, and a workman is worth his wages and double if he faithful. And you showing up every day. Listen, I got you. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Keep doing the work. But remember this right here. Don't forget to say my son's name. That's what the Lord took. Don't forget to say my son's name now. Because I understand it's all kind of religions on there. But, hey, you can respect them, but let them know about J-E-S-U-S. Let them know now because cause that's who changed you. That what the spirit let me. That's who changed you. That's who renewed you now. Now listen, you ain't got nothing against this prophet and that prophet and this religion, that religion. You ain't out here starting no religious war now. But got to let them know who changed you. J U S U S. Jesus. You hear me? Yes, you are. Whatever y'all call her, Yahweh. Okay, Jesus Christo. Whatever y'all call him now. Listen to me. It's real out here. And you got to stand your ground. Because I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. Of the same scenarios. Because it's demoralizing to me. Because I'm like, man, I'm busting my butt. To treat my woman like a queen. Regardless of who she is. Regardless of what she do and what she don't do, I love her the way Christ loved the church. Point blank, period. And it is draining when you busting your butt and you look up and Tom, Dick, and Harry doing anything they want to do out here. They giving into their flesh. They doing whatever they want to do. And they got women lined up around the corner for them. And then they looking at me, laughing at me, calling me a simp. But it's because they women then lost their backbone and laying down and letting them do whatever they want to do. So they looking at me and they like, man, why am I, hey, why am I sleep with one woman, Tony? Because I lust out the other women. So why am I going to turn that off and be faithful to her when she ain't going nowhere? When she going to stay? When all she going to do is cry and go hire you for coaching? She going broke on the phone with you. But then as soon as she hang up the phone with you, I got on a bike. Doing everything under the sun. And she right back with me. Now she losing weight. She cooking three times a day. She dressing better. She trying to look better. Because she trying to win my affection so that I don't go back and sleep with this woman over here again. So, Tony, what in the world I'm finna live like you and your partners out there your little minions, your, your little homeboys, and all of y'all simps, and y'all dying out to your flesh, y'all crucifying your flesh, and y'all is out there, y'all get to sleep with y'all woman once every three weeks, cause cause y'all let her do whatever she want to do. She chasing a bag, she doing plalati, she doing this and that, she doing this. She working corporate. She she selling clothes online. She don't. She too tired to cook. She too tired to sleep with you. And y'all, that what y'all. That's y'all life right there. <laughs> yeah, up over here get to cheat. Why I get to go to the strip club? Why I get to watch pornography? Why I get to talk to her about having old threesome? Why I get to do everything, boy? So what is the benefit? This what they this what the grown boy is saying to me. 
This what the grown boy is saying to me. So I'm like, man, it, listen. I need y'all help as women. Like, I can't get a man in order and have, tell him to do the right thing when he do the wrong thing and a woman, his woman reinforce it. How I'm going to get through to him? Because now when you up and leave, now he got to come talk to me. And I'm able to tell him, all right, see, that what you gonna, that what you get. That what you're gonna lose a good woman if you don't learn how to be a man. Now I can get through to him because your legs closed and cause you out the way. Now he can hear God. Because you out the way. But as long as you down there doing everything, he God can't reach him because you in the way. You see what I'm saying? Don't be a distraction. Don't distract the man from the from the king, the Lord Almighty. Get out the way, so he could hear, so he could hit rock bottom, so he could hear what his purpose is and what he's supposed to be doing as a man. Listen to me now. I don't even know what the title of this thing, so that everybody and their mama will watch it. So it could fix relationships. Come on now. Hey, this is Tony, guys. God bless you. And listen, I know you've seen some advertisements. And a lady said today, she's like, thank you for not putting no advertisements on. The, I'm like, I ain't do that. I ain't changed nothing. So anything it, anything that got changed with the advertisement, YouTube did that. Because I, cause I want them on there. So if I'm giving my time for my wife and kid, hey. I need five loaves of bread and two fish. You hear me? Hey, I got to feed my family. If I'm giving hours and hours and hours a day, hey, I got to feed family now. Otherwise, I can go get on somebody's job and be pushing a forklift now and, and, and eat that way. But if I'm going to be on here serving people hours a day trying to help, hey, I need my advertisement. Hey, this is Tony Gasson. God bless you. We'll talk soon.